the gateway to the supernatural. In other words, there is a place that you and I can enter into that can cause the supernatural to become natural. So if you will go with me in the book of Psalms 66. Now here's the word of the Lord that came to me. If you want to write this down, write it down. That's why I'm just kind of taking my time. This is the word of the Lord that came to me. To those who will stay in faith. To those who will stay in faith will see the miraculous in their life undeniable proofs of the mighty hand of God to those who will stay in faith will see the miraculous in their life undeniable proofs of the mighty hand of God and there are three things that is, is about to happen in the earth three things that is about to happen I'm prophesying three things is about to happen I have been on a journey for some time now, and I've been trying to figure out what is going on. Why are people easily offended? Why people commitment level has left? The love for God and love for the kingdom. Lord, what's going on? I've been on a journey for some time, and he gave it to me this week, the gateway to the supernatural. The three things that is about to happen is this. Number one, there's a recompense coming. There is a recompense coming. The scripture talks about that uh, in Proverbs 11. And there are many other. I'm just going to give you the scripture. Proverbs 11, 31. There are other scriptures. I'm not even going to get into that. Uh, I'm going to teach on later. Recompense. Now, what is recompense? Recompense, to be recompensed, is to be repaid. To make restitution. Watch this. For damage of any kind. He said, there's a recompense coming to my people in Isaiah 35, verse four. He said, there's a recompense because many of you may have been hurt by something. Many of you may have been uh, your life may have got got thrown in a detour somewhere. And, and some things may have happened. that have tried to shipwreck you, but you held on to your faith. You didn't quit. You didn't give up. You didn't throw in the towel like things were trying to get you to do. But you was really hurt by it. You was real. I mean, it ain't like they say, no, you no, you were hurt. You was hurt. Man, if they would hurt you, he said, I'm about to recompense you. Everything that you may seem like you've lost, I'm bringing, I'm going to make restitution to you. I'm going to make even people repay with the damage they've done to you. You're going to experience a recompense. Shout, recompense is in my house. The second thing he said is, is happening right now is restoration. Everything that has been lost, everything that has been stolen, everything that you may have lost just through honest mistake or just through ignorance or just through some kind of satanic attack, something, anything that has caused you to lose anything, peace, joy, sleep, money, whatever the case may be, he said there is a restoration coming to your house. And the scriptures for that is Jeremiah 30, 17. He's talking about it, about restoring the health unto you. In other words, all the, all the physical battles that you may have encountered. That, that you know, that man, you've been fight, fighting in your health. He said, I'm going to restore health to you. I'm about to bring some health back to you speedily. Joel chapter 2, verse 23 through 32 talking about he's going to restore unto you everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, everything that got lost, he's going to bring it back to you. We're talking about the gateway to the supernatural, meaning all what we're talking about now is going to come supernaturally. Isaiah 61 and 7. Now, what does restoration mean? It's an act of restoring. It's an act of restoring. Now, according to scripture, Anytime the Bible talks about restoration, it's always better than what it was. When the water was made wine, it was better the last state than it was from the very beginning. 
And that's what God said he's about to do in everybody's life who've been holding on to faith. I'm going to make some things better for you than what you've ever been. You've seen some good days, but you ain't seen the days I'm about to bring you. I'm about to bring some days into you where you're going to be so happy and you're going to be so thankful that you didn't give in, that you didn't throw in the towel, that you didn't listen to them other people who did, who went their route. There's a day coming. He, you're going to be so grateful and thankful to God that you held on and that you didn't do what everybody else do. You didn't choose the road they chose. You wanted to, but you didn't let your mind do. And he said, I'm going to bring a recompense and a restoration. You're going to be so happy and thankful that you didn't go that route because there's a joy he said I'm about to bring back to you for your salvation and in that joy you're going to experience everything that he promised you the third thing the third thing that we're about to enter into that's about to take place rewards is about to be given oh you missed that I said rewards is about to be given I said rewards is about to be given. You got to hear me this morning. I'm, I'm telling you what I know. When that Mercedes 550 had pulled up in the driveway, I thought, I thought it was a trick. I thought somebody was playing games with me. And it was put into my hands and said, this is yours. I, I thought somebody was, see, some of you still don't even believe that. You, you, believe I, you believe I concoct the story. But you know what? I let you believe whatever you want to believe. See, you got to come to a place. You can't let what somebody disbelieve affect what you believe. And when I sat in that big boy and I said, oh, my God, this is mine. This is what the spirit of God said. He said, this is your reward. This is your reward for not quitting when you wanted to quit. This is your reward. Watch this for everybody that spoke against you. This is your reward. See, folks, I'm telling you, you can be missing out on some things because you're fighting with people. You're arguing with people and you're doing things. And God said, I don't need for you to do none of that. But if you just stay in faith, I'll be your rewarder. I'll be the one who will fight your battle. And when God rewards you, it's always a supernatural thing. It goes beyond the natural. Are you with me here? He said rewards will be given. Hebrews 11 and 6 said he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Watch this. If you bring a prophet a cup of cold water in the name of a prophet, he said you shall receive a prophet's reward. Rewards are, rewards are coming to people who have served men and women of God. He said they're about to see rewards. Why, what is God doing? Because there's too much negative speech. There's a lot of negativity that has came toward the church to try to downplay his promise, downplay who he is. So God is about to do supernatural things to open the eyes of, the, of those who don't believe. Open the eyes even to people who do believe because Jesus is Lord. He's going to always be Lord. God is almighty. Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah, Jireh. He's going to always be God. And the, ne the devil will never reign in the earth. The devil will never, no matter how much mud he try to throw on the body of Christ, he'll never reign because Jesus will always cause us rise from the clay. Of what's been thrown. Every time lemon gets thrown at you, he's going to turn that thing into lemonade. He said, but I need for you to stay in faith. Stay in faith. So those are the three things that's about to hit the earth. Now go to Psalm 66 right quick. The gateway to the supernatural, the entrance into this thing. Look at Psalm 66. Look at verse 12 right quick. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Remember now, the gateway is a mean or access into an uh, entry to a place. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. In other words, it's all what you've been through. It's not going to be compared to what you're about to walk into. Oh, let me say it again. All what you've been through. It's not going to be compared to what you're about to walk into. 
Let me say it again. Let me say it again because I'm establishing something in the earth. All that you've been through is not compared to what you're about to walk into. The door has already been opened. The entry has already been given access. You're about to experience a supernatural like no other. Man can't do it. Man won't be able to do it. He said, I'm about to reward you. I'm about to recompense you. I'm about to restore you. Everything, and it's going to be done supernaturally. Supernaturally, a wealthy place. This is what I'm brought you into. Now go to Isaiah right quick. Isaiah, praise God. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter the entry, the gateway. What is the gateway? Because it's happening, but there's a gateway. There, there's something I'm going to have to do now. So you got to follow me. Isaiah chapter 60. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 60, right quick. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Watch this here. Yes, watch this. Isaiah chapter 60, look at verse 1 right quick. Isaiah chapter 60, look at verse 1. Arise, shine. Watch this. For the light is come. The light here he's talking about is illumination, he, revelation, insight. He said, arise. The Amplified said, arise from your depression and your prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. In other words, you're getting information now. You're getting enlightenment. You're about to get illuminated. Your eyes are about to open. You begin to see what you never saw before. You begin to hear what you never heard before. Light has come. What the enemy tried to put you in darkness about, you're no longer in darkness about. What, what the enemy even tried to keep from you, the light has came now. He says, so now, since you got the light, arise. arise change your posture. Change your position in which things may have kept you in the past. Okay, you went through some stuff in the past, but arise from that. You had some difficult, but arise from that. You may have even been mistreated in the past, but arise from that. Things may not I have gone some ways that you would like for them to go in the past arise from that because the light is come the light is here the door is open the time is now the season is now arise change your posture change your position look different walk different talk different don't keep singing the same sad song don't keep playing the violin what used to happen what they did to you arise from that place arise from how they always treated you arise from what they doing arise from the negative Change that. You ain't that. You ain't got time for that no more. The light has come. Watch this. Watch this here. For behold, here we go. The darkness shall cover the earth. In other words, what's about to happen, man? People are still gonna be walking in darkness. It's covering the earth. Gross darkness to people. But the Lord shall arise upon you. And here we go. His glory shall be seen. You ain't got to try to fight with nobody. You ain't even got to try to get them to understand. What I'm about to usher you into this morning, it's a light. Go to glory. It's going to be resting on you. And you ain't got to say a word. All you got to do is just keep loving, keep walking in love, keep forgiving, keep doing your part. And God going to handle the rest. Watch this here. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. People being drawn to you. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. Meaning there are going to be people in high position and high places that's going to be attracted to you. That's what a supernatural going to come in there. You're going to attract people in different high places. They're, they're not, it's something about you that they, that they admire. And even though you may not even qualify but because it's something on you that's radiating. They see something on you that they don't see on everybody else. That's what's going to cause you to enter in. Watch this. Lift up thy eyes round about and see. Lift up your eyes and see. That's so important because what do you see? What you see is going to be a direct effect of what you have. If you look at things from a negative perspective, negativity is all what you're going to see. 
negativity of all what you're going to experience. But if you can look at something, even though it looked this way, but you're not going to choose to look at it that way. You choose to look at that things with a different lens because, man, I'm, I'm looking for God to show up in at any time. I'm looking for God to change that any time. But watch this, buckle your seatbelt, we're heading somewhere. But I can't look and think and talk like that until there's a change in my heart. See, my heart is, a ref my heart is reflected through my mouth. What's in my heart will be seen by what's coming out of my mouth. You can tell me all day you love me, but what you say about me reflects how you really feel. You can tell me all day, Pastor, I'm with you, but what's in your heart, what's coming out your mouth will be the real reflection of how you really feel about me. Are you with me here? Lift up your eyes and see. All they gather themselves together to thee. Thy son shall come from far. Thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and do what? Flow together. You got, you got, oh boy. What the enemy has tried to do for years is keep people divided so you can't flow together. And I'm going to show you here in a minute, that's the last day attempt to stop the recompense, restoration, and rewards is to keep people divided. He said, because when you see, you're going to know and understand the importance of y'all flowing together. Watch this here. Thy heart shall fear, be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. That's talking about wealth. He said wealth is going to be transferred into your hands. Wealth is going to be transferred into the hands of the believers, of those who know how to use it. Wealth is going to be transferred. Oh, yo, come, oh, come on now. Come on, come on. Wealth is going to be transferred, watch this, into the people's hands who don't mind giving. Wealth is going to be transferred into the hands of the people who, who, who put the kingdom of God first. He said wealth is going to be transferred into the hand and the Gentiles going to bring it, but it's going to be converted to you because you're going to put the house of God. You ain't going to have no problem giving. You, when God speak to you, you ain't going to mind. He said, that's why I'm going to, I have to, I have to transfer wealth to you. But if money got you and you can't give and you can't sow and you're looking at what the man got and you let that be the determining factor of what you give and what you don't give, or you're looking at other people and you're being critical and you're speaking against it because you don't feel like you need to do it. You don't feel. He said, no, no. You're being canceled out for the wealth transfer. But when we've got the heart and the mind to understand the purpose of wealth transfer. Yeah, come on y'all look at me. I want you to look at me because I'm prophesying to you. I'm going to get you free. And the first thing I got to get you free of is being attached to money. Money can't come what you can't lose. Influence can't come what you can't lose. What you have a hold on or you got a hold on you can't let it go. How can it come? So God said, I got to break you from the ties or what's got you so gripped so I can release it back into your hand. We're talking about the gateway to the supernatural. Watch this. He said, you should see flow together. The harsh of fear being large because of the abundance. Actually, let me just show it to you because I don't want you to, I don't want you to, you, you on Psalm 66, I said Isaiah. Did the, did the thing stop? Isaiah, Okay, well, praise God. We're going to go on. Okay. Six, 66 and what? Six. 65? What's going on up there? Put that in Amplified. Watch this here. Then you shall see, be radiant. And your heart should be thrilled and tremble with joy at the glorious deliverance and be enlarged because of the abundant wealth of the dead shall be turned to you and the nation shall come to their treasures. I'm going to turn this thing that what the enemy thought he was holding from you. I'm going to make sure you get it. Everything that is rightfully due to you. Oh, you're going to get it. Everything that's owed to you. Oh, you're going to get it. He said, that's why I rise. Change your posture. Change your position. Stop, uh, stop arguing with people. Stop fussing with people. Get your heart right. Because I'm going to make sure all the older you come to you. Watch this here. Look at verse 11 right quick as we move on. I'm just laying a foundation. Verse 11. 
Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that the kings may be brought. Now go to verse 5, go to verse 11 and amplify. Watch this right quick. Watch this here. Watch this, man. Your gates, your life shall be open continually. This is God's doing. This is what God is going to be doing on your life. It shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of the nation, the kings led in procession, your voluntary captives. In other words, God going to make sure everything that is rightfully belong to you come to you. Nothing going to be able to shut it. The gateway to the supernatural. Now we got to find out what, what, what is the thing, Lord? What are you saying? What can cause all this? Because just by me being born again and it hadn't happened yet mean it's got to be something else. Pastor, you teach on faith all the time. But OK, faith alone, we know faith access the promises of God. So what is it that that is still not happening? We're going to see that here in a minute. So let's go. For, let's go again. Right. quick. I'm just laying a foundation. Second Timothy. Right. Quick. Chapter three. Second Timothy. Chapter three. The gateway to the supernatural. Man, so good to see y'all today, boy. Woo! Man, I couldn't wait to get here. The shirt is. This is what I heard all week long when I was away in my room praying and just praying in the spirit. God, listening to the Holy Spirit. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at verse 1 right quick. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Look at verse 1 in the Amplified right quick. But understand this. The Amplified. Verse 1. But understand this, that in the last days will come, set in, perilous times of great stress, trouble, hard to deal with, and hard to bear. Look at verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, people spreading lies, incontent, people that's incontent, never satisfied, fierce, despisers of those that are good, people that don't even like you and they can't even tell you why they don't like you. Who got a problem with you? They just hate your guts. Just by, just by the sight of looking at you, they mm. <laughs> You know, I like stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Watch this, but denying the power thereof. He said, from such, turn away. Get away from people like that. They, they, now, if you're in church, you won't know them. Because everybody look the same. But how you will know is, is when they walk out the building. And how they act and what they do outside. The, and sometimes, they get bold enough the way they do it in the building. He said, but for such, turn away. Get away from people like that because they're going to mess up your harvest. They're going to mess up what God's trying to do. So when you recognize that, when you recognize people who's walking in those qualities, when you recognize people who is doing no thing, he said, but now this is not Paul. This is not Anthony Stephen. This is Paul. Paul said, from such, turn away. Turn a deaf ear to them. Walk away from them. Get away from them. Run as fast as you can run. Uh, uh, what's the name? Forrest? Forrest Gump? Run, Forrest, run. Turn away from them. Because they're going to mess up your harvest. Watch this here. Let's, let's go a little further. Because we're talking about the gateway. First Timothy. Look at First Timothy right quick. Look at chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. The gateway to the supernatural. First Timothy chapter 4. He said, now the speaketh, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Watch this. Giving heed 
to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Watch this. Having their conscience seared with hot iron. In other words, don't even have no respect or even kind of uh, uh, even have, don't even have a heart to what they're doing. I mean, can, can be very disrespectful and don't even care if they're doing it or not. They, I mean, having a conscious seed where they don't even have a repentive heart anymore. They say and do anything without a consciousness anymore. It, the Holy Spirit can't even convict them anymore because they, 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 they done did it for so long now that they, it's just part of them now. The heart has become so hardened that uh, it, their conscience has been seared. He said they've been giving heed to seducing spirits. Now, what, what does all that have to do with the, what we're talking about, the gateway to the supernatural? Because all of this is going to affect what's happening right now. Can we go a little bit further? Can we go a little bit further? Go with you into Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Here we go. Matthew chapter 22. Praise God. Matthew chapter 22. Ephesians 3 and 20 said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God is able to do. But look at Matthew chapter 22 right quick. Praise God. The gateway to the supernatural. We get ready to enter into it now. Where there are guarantees that's going to take place. You know what? Hold your place there and go to 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm about to jump ahead of myself. 2 Peter chapter 1. Praise God. In 2 Peter chapter 1. All right, where are we at? Come on, Bible. Man, I'm up here shaking. Good gracious. Second Peter chapter one, because this I mean, this thing is serious. I heard from God, folks. I'm not just talking because I got to give an account to this thing. Second Peter chapter one right quick. Watch this here. Second Peter chapter one, look at verse one. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding, here we go, exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. He said this is how the supernatural is going to take place because these promises that God has given you, the promises of God in a, will, will be the agent that will enable you to go around things that other people may have to go through. You ain't going to go through what everybody else have to go through. God has already got this thing set up and mapped out that there are some things that's going to happen for you that ain't happening for everybody else. How many received that? How many received that? That there are things that going to be happening for you that ain't happening for everybody else. I said, how many received that? Come on, Sha, I received that, Pastor. I received that. I received that. I received that. That, it, that things will be happening for me. That's not happening for everybody else. I received that. Now watch this here. And besides this, here we go. Giving all diligence, add to your faith. Virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, to patience godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness charity, which is love. Here we go, verse 8. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lack these things is blind. Remember, Isaiah said, your eye, look, look and see. 
But now Peter's saying, but if these things is lacking in you, you're going to be blind. You ain't going to be able to see. You ain't going to be able to see what you, you're not going to be able to see that wealth coming. You're not going to be able to see them doors open if, if you're blind because there is something lacking in you that's causing you not to be able to see. Watch this here. He that lacked these things is blind, cannot see or fall off, and watch this, hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He done forgot what he done came through. And because he forgot what he came, he can't see now. And he can't see Isaiah 60. He that lacked these things. He that lacked, notice, add to your faith. Pastor, I got faith. Oh, I got faith. Okay. Add to your faith. Go to Galatians chapter 6. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. He that lacked these things, add to your faith. Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse, verse 6. Galatians 5, look at verse 6 right quick. For in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything or mean anything, nor uncircumcision, but what? Faith, which what? Worketh how? How does faith work? This mic that I have on, it works by battery. If I was to take Back home. You didn't take it out. I took it out. And because I took it out, I cut off my supply. If I, oh, come on, my back. Are you with me here? Are you with me here? Nobody else took it out. I took it out. And because I took out what made this work, I shut down everything. He said, faith works by love. You can have faith all day long. But if no love is at work in you, you lack these things. You're blind and you can't see because your faith will not be able to work. Hallelujah. Oh, we're headed somewhere. We're headed somewhere. Now go to Matthew chapter 22. Man, don't y'all do this because I'm already about to cut up myself up here. I'm already about ready to wear some cup flips. Oh my, I'm getting my tongue tied. Okay, let me calm down. I'm getting tongue tied. I'm getting tongue tied. Hallelujah. Because I found the master key. I found the mystery. I found the missing link. People wondering why things are not happening. People wondering, I'm doing this, Pastor. I'm doing this, but seem like things ain't working. Pastor, I don't understand. How can I be praying and this ain't got my breakthrough yet? Pastor, I've been wondering why I've been so discouraged and it feel like I'm missing something. It feel like something ain't right. That there's a missing link somewhere. I can't find the missing link. Pastor, I don't understand what it is, what's going on, but I, all I know is I, I mean, but things it just seemed like my love ain't like they're there no more. It seemed like my, my desire, even for the things of God, ain't there no more. Pastor, ain't nothing against you, ain't nothing against the church. I just don't feel something, some things no more. I just don't feel in love. I don't feel the connection to people like I used to do. I don't understand what's going on. The last days, the last days, the last days. There will be a trick initiated in the church that's going to that designed to stop the supernatural because the truth is every member of life changing you don't experience the supernatural every member 
There are people in here right now that bypass things. They didn't have to fill out forms everybody else had to fill out. There are people in here right now that walk in the homes where they, that they were disqualified for. There are people right now who drive in cars that, that first they said you couldn't get it but had to turn around and change their own mind. So, are you, so are you, there are people in this book right now that's working jobs that you didn't even qualify for. Are you, so the supernatural is here. But God said, I want to take this thing from glory to glory. I don't want yesterday victory to be a monument. Oh, let me say it again. Oh, let, I don't want yesterday victory to be a monument. In other words, well, you don't pitch the tent. You celebrate what happened five years ago. God said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're never supposed to have a monument. No, we go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. We go from faith to faith to faith to faith. We're never supposed to pitch our tents just because we got one victory. God said, there's so much more I want to do for you. You don't pitch your tent at a place, Abram. Abram, rise from where you are and look. And as far as you can see, so have I give you. Walk the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of it. Abraham took his tent and he moved on. He realized it was more to see than where I stopped at. But if you go back and look at Genesis 13, you'll see why he stopped there. Because Lot was there. That word Lot means obstructed view. He got blinded. He got sidetracked. And sidetracked caused him to pitch his tent. Something got in front of his eyes. That stopped him from seeing all what God wanted him to see. But the moment Lot was removed, the moment the obstructive view was removed from him, he was able to see there was so much more God wanted to do. And that's what God wants to do with us and those who are watching by live streaming. He wants you to remove the lots from your eyes. He wants you to recognize who's with you that I told you to let go. He wants you to recognize what's still holding on to you that I've been told you to let go of because you holding on to it is keeping you at a place that I never designed for you to stay there. Yes, that was a journey. Yes, you had to go that route. But that route wasn't the place you were supposed to stay. There are some of you in places you you're supposed to be gone from that place. But you got comfortable. You got settled. You let people kept you there. You let, you're saying, I don't want all that. I don't need all that. And it ain't got nothing to do with what you want. God said, I'm the God of covenant. I'll bless you to be a blessing. But if you're selfish, all you're going to think about is you. Hallelujah. Watch this, Matthew 22 right quick. Matthew 22. Watch this here. Because there are two major laws according to scripture. There are two major laws. The law of faith, Romans 12 and 3, and the law of love. Two major laws. Look at Matthew 22. Watch this right quick. Look at verse 34. Isn't this good? Look at Matthew 22 right quick. Look at verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, watch this. Mm. They gathered together. They gathered together. That's like people getting together and talk about what they don't like. Well, I know ain't none of that in here, but People get together and they talk about what they don't like. That's what they were doing. Watch this here. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, really trying to be smart. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
on these two hang everything. Every promise that's going to enable you to be a partaker of the divine nature. Every promise that God has given to us to escape the corruption that is in this world, those promises hang on love. If I remove the rod, everything else is coming down. If you remove the rod that's in your house, everything is coming down. And this is what he's saying. Yes, I've given you exceeding great and precious promises. By these, they will enable you to become a partaker of his divine nature. In other words, these promises that God has given us will allow you and enable you to take on a whole new nature. The word of God, the promises of God on you will cause you to move. I'm talking about moving some realms that a natural man can't do. The word of God at work in you will cause you to do and move beyond the average and the natural. Are you with me here? He said it will enable you to escape the corruption of the world. But then now he's saying all of those promises rest on, on love, though. What's going to make those things work is your love. How much you love. That's what's going to make those promises active. This is why people are frustrated, scared, discouraged, angry at the church, mad with the preacher, don't want to come to church no more because they feel like things ain't working. He's preaching. He the only one being blessed. He the only one that's right here. He got favoritism. You know, all the different things that people throw out. That, you know, the reason why they want to come. No, it ain't that. It's your love walk. Because God is no, thing. I got one clap, I got one clap. God, God, God is no respecter of persons. He won't do more for me than you. But if I love more than you, it ain't that God is doing more for me than you. It's the love that I'm walking in that's causing me to obtain more than you. And it ain't that God loved me more than you. It's my love at work that is greater than yours. I don't forgave more than you. I don't let stuff go more than you. See, you still may be holding on to something. You still got an attitude. <laughs> Boy, you know I like stuff like that. Y'all know I like stuff like that. Kids told me I should have been an actor. Look at St. John 13 right quick. St. John 13. St. John 13. I found the answer. It's the love walk. St. John 13. That's it. It's the love walk. It's the thing that's been hindered. It's the thing that the enemy have covered and tried to make it, make it be everything else. And it's just one simple thing, my love walk. That's affected everything about my life. Look at St. John 13. Watch this here. Look at verse 34. St. John 13, look at verse 34. I got to move on here. Watch this. Is this good? Yeah. Look at St. John 13, look at verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. Amen. Well, let, let's back up for a minute. By this by your car shall all men know you his disciples. By your clothes shall all men know you his disciples. By how you look shall all men know you his disciples. Just by what you speak and how eloquent you are shall all men know that you're my disciples. He said the way that everybody will know who you belong to is by what you carry, which is your love. Jesus said the distinctive mark of who that represents me, the distinctive mark of you saying I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, I'm born again, it's not the big cross that you wear. It's not the Jesus on your bumper sticker. It's not them fine clothes you got on, that beautiful makeup you got on, that dress, those nice shoes. Oh, thank God for it, praise God. But that ain't the distinctive mark of who you are. 
the distinctive mark of you being a representative of Jesus Christ, the distinctive mark of you being a born again believer, the distinctive mark of you being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, it's not your dance. That's all your, the distinctive mark of you being born again, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, it's not the car you rolled up in here with. Uh, the distinctive mark of you being a born again, it's not those shoes that you got on. Thank God the suit you wear. Are you listening to me? Or the, the jewelry you may have, your pocket put, that Gucci, Versace, all that. Oh, you know, thank God, but that ain't the distinctive mark that you are born again. He said the distinctive mark that you're a born again believer. It's the love that you have in your heart towards one another, that you love others as you love yourself. You don't put yourself above nobody else. Hallelujah. That's the distinctive mark. By this shall all men know you're my disciples by your love. One toward another. One toward another. I love you. You're such a blessing. You, you, you just, you just, uh, oh, you're just such a blessing. you just such a blessing. you just such a blessing. you such a blessing. All right, now, watch yourself, man. Watch yourself. You, <laughs> you, you, you're such a blessing. You're such a blessing. slain in the spirit. How can you switch that quick from being slain in the spirit hallelujah to rolling your eyes at her because you don't by this oh she know I love her and see, even with stuff like that, I have to be watch, watch for stuff like that. Y'all know me. I love doing illustration. But sometimes, even when, when, when you're blind and you can't see, you'll think I'll be trying to throw a jab at you. But when you know who your man of God is, he, I, I got to do certain things so you can see it. Now watch this here. Hold your seatbelt. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And Trey, go to the TPT version. And I'm going to stand right here and read it. Because I got faith. I got faith. I got faith, man. Hmm. I got some faith. Oh, I know how to believe, Pastor. I got some faith. Don't be telling me anger. I, I got faith. You do. Uh -huh. I agree. Because Romans 12 and 3 said God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So I agree you have faith. But how much of it is at work? Because faith works. Faith is going to always produce. You'll never say you in faith and don't get results. But faith works by love. So the more I'm in love, the more I'm going to see the, the, the fruit of my faith. That's what a challenge at today. Don't get me wrong. We live the last day. It'll be things hard to deal with, hard to bear. I brought that out to show you. Oh, yeah, there are times your love walk will be challenged. There are times that you want to go up somebody head down their back under their feet. And boy, if you could God give me five minutes. 
God, give me five minutes in the flesh. If you just give me five minutes in the flesh, I can do it five minutes with them. Just give me, Lord, give me five minutes in the flesh. I can get all this out. And God said, no. Because I've been there. Hard to deal with, hard to bear. There are things that can come that can really. And if you go back and look at the script, they gathered themselves against Jesus to talk about him. Because he put them to silent. He shut them down. And when he shut them down, they got together, began to talk about what they didn't like about what he said. You know how sometimes you do that after church? And you might gather together in the parking lot or call somebody. What, what, what you think about what pastor said? Boy, we got quiet. Okay, okay. First Corinthians 13, look at verse 1. If I were to speak with eloquence in earth many languages, watch this, and in a heavenly tongue of angels, yet I didn't express myself with love. My words would be reduced to a hollow sound and nothing more than a clinging symbol. Verse 2. And if I were to have the gift of prophecy with your anointed self, with the profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, I mean, you know how to, the Greek, the Hebrew, you know how to break it down. And if I possess unending supernatural knowledge, oh, I got the gift of knowledge and I prophesy. And if I had the greatest gift of faith that I could move mountains, but have never learned to love. I'm working on my gifts, but I'm not even working on cultivating my love. I'm working on getting a better job, but not cultivating my love. I'm working on other things to be talented and working on my gifts and talents, but I'm never cultivating and learning how to love more. Watch this. I am nothing. Look at verse 3. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I own to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a model, meaning a sacrifice that is being made, without, the, without, without, I'm doing all these great things. I'm feeding the poor. I'm feeding the homeless. Man, I'm doing great things. I'm giving out turkey on Thanksgiving. Christmas, I'm handing out bags. I got my, I got my Santa Claus hat on, and I'm ringing the bell. Because I'm doing it, you know. Watch this. Without the pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. Because I think that's going to be my reward. And Jesus said, when you do things to be seen of men, that's your reward right there. Whatever you do, he said, do it in secret. And when you do things in secret, he said, he'll be the one that rewards you openly. You don't have to let nobody know what you're doing. Actually, the truth is, it's nobody's business what you're doing. Because Jesus is the Lord of your life. Not y'all life, but your life. And sometimes we get tripped up because we share things with people who don't do what you do. You share insights that God has dealt with you about that they ain't got the revelation of yet. And if you can be so soul tied to other people that you can call, you, if you're not watchful, you can allow them to cause you to stop doing what you know God told you to do. Because they ain't got the revelation of it. Watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 4. Love is large and incredibly what? Patient. Love is gentle. It's consistently kind to all. It don't have no favoritism. It don't pick and choose who they want to love and who they don't want to love. Isn't it sad that the Apostle Paul is preaching this to a church? Let me take you in history. The Apostle Paul is preaching and teaching this to the church of Corinth. 
And he's telling the church of Corinth this. Isn't it interesting that the Apostle Paul is bringing this type of order to a church, letting them know, look, you got to be kind to all. Why? Because in the last days, there'll be some who'll be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, heady, high-minded, truth breakers, covenant breakers, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So he's letting them know that there will be a time come that, that people will not have a love for one another. But they're Christians. So he, Paul is correcting this thing. He's letting them know, look, no, uh, you can be doing all of this, but if love ain't, ain't working at your life, you ain't doing nothing. Watch this here. Watch this. Love is large, incredibly patient. Love is gentle, consistent to carry on. It refuses to be jealous. When blessing comes to someone else. In other words, when someone else gets blessed, you can't even celebrate them. What in the world? When something happened good for you and I can't celebrate it? It's something in me that's causing me not to be able to do that. But that, but that is stopping the gateway to the supernatural. Watch this. Love does not brag about one's achievement, nor inflate its own importance. It's about me. It's about me. It's about me. Well, let me tell you about what happened. Let me tell you, Pastor, what happened to me. Well, okay, let me tell you about what happened to me first. But let me share my testimony. Okay, I got one. Will you just let me get it out? Okay, let, let me. Because I can't even hear what God is trying to do in you. Because I have made myself so important that everything has got to be about me. It's got to be about me. You didn't speak to me. You didn't shake my hand. Well, you didn't speak to me. So why do you have to be angry because I didn't speak to you? Why couldn't you make the effort and come speak to me? Why? You are the important one. Are you with me here? We're doing some cutting because there's a supernatural you're about to enter into. And I don't want you walking into your wealthy place and that thing getting messed up all because some past stuff ain't dealt with yet. Watch this here. Look at verse 5. Watch this verse 5. Watch this. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect, nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. God's love don't do that. God's love don't disrespect. How can you say I love my man to God but disrespect him all up and down? How can you say I honor God and I love God but I hate his wife and I don't care enough for his children? Love don't do that. Love don't disrespect. Love is not selfish. Love is kind. Love don't hold grudges. Could, could I, am I still mad behind something that happened 20 years ago? Some effects I get is because I never did one thing to you. But it was that pastor that you had 15 years ago that you hadn't let go of yet. Or that you seen do something years ago. That now the first look I give you is seen like I'm just like him. So now immediately I'm put in the same category. Why? I hadn't let go of something. Hadn't let go of it. Now I could be messing up my own brook. Because I'm holding on to an offense. That's eating up all of my seeds. And every time I give, I'm giving it to a ground that got worms eating it all up. And I can't figure out why. It's that offense still in that ground. 
that's eating up every last one of my seeds. Well, the church must not be anointed because I'm not seeing no fruit for my labor. It ain't the church ain't anointed. It's the ground that still got the worms eating up every seed that you put in it. It's not irritated. Quick to take offense. Nisha said something to me yesterday. She was talking to her mom on the phone. Nisha said something. I said, what you mean? What, what you mean by that? She said, Pop, go to bed. I said, you know how we do. We get, you know, we get a little quickly offended. The sound of something. It may not even be the intention, but just the sound. And if my heart have not been healed from sounds, anytime I may hear a certain sound, that offense that is rooted will always rise up and, be, and remain strong again off of a sound. Because love never got in to uproot that thing, to move it out. And it's messing up. My supernatural. Can y'all just give me a few more minutes? Watch this here. Watch this. Look at verse 6. Love joyfully celebrate honesty. Finds no delight in what is wrong. I don't celebrate people when they fall. Yeah, see, I told you. See, I told you. Uh-huh. See, that? see look, at, look at it now. Uh-huh. See, yeah, yeah, look at it now. Uh huh. See, I told you. I told. I told you. I told you. I told you. See, I, th I told you that was gonna happen. See that. See that. See they should have listened to me. If they would have listened, they, they would have never happened. See, I told you. See, uh -oh. you celebrating in the wrong. You celebrating because somebody failed and had a mishap because you said so. Let's flip it. Could you be the doomer then that prophesied their doom? Now watch this. That don't mean that, oh, oh, yeah, it do. Because now you're the one held accountable for it. Now, when you stand before God, God's going to be able to, now God's going to tell you it was you and what you said about them that caused that. Now, I'm holding that to you. Words can put you in prison. Words can free you. And we've been, and we've been so loose with our tongue and have no control of it. Because we feel like we got our own right. We can say what we want to say and we can do what we want to do. And, and the scripture said, by your words, you shall be justified. And by your words, you shall be condemned. And the, the same idle words that men shall speak, you shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. In other words, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that person messed up. But look what you were saying. So your words initiated some things. So your words is part of why they are where they are and they can't get free. Oh, that's why I had to learn years ago to keep my mouth off people, period. No matter what I like, what I don't like, what I appreciate, what I don't appreciate. And I've had some lies told on me. I had my name slandered. I had me, my, me and ladies' name thrown in the mud. We've had backstab. I'm talking about people have tried to shut us down, shut this church down, lied. I'm talking about lie, lie, lies that could have got me in jail. I'm, I'm talking about, man, you talking about somebody that said something about you. Man, I've had lies told on me that could have put me in prison. Are oh, you listening to me? And I still had to forgive and walk in love as if they did nothing. Why? To be able to stand here anointed like I'm anointed today. To stand here to better preach this word like I'm able to preach it. I'm talking about preaching with power, preaching with passion, preaching with fire, preaching under the conviction. Because I'm not standing here giving you false information. I'm standing here as a testimony of how I what I had to do. I had to shut my flesh down, go into prayer for about three or four days, shut myself off. Because I see myself going back in 88, 87, 89, and boy, how bad I want to go back in 89. 88 and 89. But, but God said, no, 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 no. Because if you go back, you may never recover. 
And yes, it hurt. Yes, you're frustrated. Yes, what they said was wrong. Yes, what they said was dear. But I'm the recompense. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. You walk in my love. You stay in my love. You ain't got to defend yourself. You walk in honor and let your honor defend you. You ain't got to talk about it. Actually, don't even talk about it no more. Because the more you talk about it, the more you're going to think about it. And the more you think about it, eventually you're going to act on it. So just get it out of your mind as if it don't exist. God, I need you. That's why when they sing that song, Lord, I need you. I have to say that every single day. Lord, I need you. Because Christians can be some mean, rude, cruel, hurtful, despiseth, mean people. Watch this. Watch this, though. Watch this. But this is why love is so powerful. Because my love what will always cause me to rise above all that. Are you with me? That's what I'm trying to usher you into. A place where you don't allow that to happen. Let me finish reading this as we close. Look at verse 7 right quick. Love is a safe place of shelter. For it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat. Just because it didn't work, I ain't defeated. Just because something didn't work out, they ain't mean I lost. Oh, I'm going to come back out. Just because it may not be going the way I like for it to go right there, they ain't mean it's over. Because I think, because love is at work in me, and love will not allow me to think the worst. Love always calls you to think the best. Oh, I'm going to rise out of this. What they meant for evil, God's still turning this thing for good. Oh, I'm going to rise out of this thing. They think I'm going to fall because of this, but what they don't know is I'm falling to jump right back up. That's all what this is because love is at work and God is not going to never let me fall. If these things be in you and abound, you should never be unfruitful. But you're going to always rise above. You can't stop a man or woman that's in love. Watch this here. And that's what the enemy, the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to keep you back to who you used to be. Because if he can keep you back to who you used to be, the real you can't come forth. Who is the real you? The real you is the person that God created in his image and his likeness. The real you is the one who he called you to be. Not who you was, but who he called you to be. There are some things he's calling you into to be. He's calling you to be the Abraham of your family. He's calling you to be the one who's going to make the difference to everybody in your bloodline. He's calling you to be the one that's going to make the mark that nobody ain't never seen before. He's calling you to be the first one in your family that hit those certain status. He's calling you to be the one that's going to step out and be the one that's going to make a difference to everybody life that you ever came encounter with. All of that is not who you was. All of that is who you are in him. He said, but I got to get you out of the mind of who you was because if you stay connected to who you was, you'll never walk into who you need to be. Are you with me here? I've been criticized. I've been persecuted. I've been slain. But I don't care about none of that because all I know is in order for you to be who you are, I had to be who I am. And I had to step into something that was very uncomfortable to show you and show you and show you that you can be who who you, who, not who you used to be, but you can be who he created you to be. Now, it's going to make a difference because some people may not like your new you. Some people may not be comfortable with your new you because they want you to stay the old you. I liked you better then. Are you with me here? I'm about done. Thank y'all for being, thank y'all for being patient. I'm about done. Watch this. Love never stops loving. Never stops loving. It extends Beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fade away. That prophesying will eventually fade away. But my love that I have for you can make an eternal imprint. 
I was talking about my sister-in-law down here. A lot of people don't even know this is first lady's baby sister. And I was sharing with my cousin, uh, Matt Mozella, granddaughter, and her husband, this past week. I said, did y'all know Don, Chris, right? They said, no. I, think we I said, her and Aunt Mozella was my first ushers. You see, he's talking about he was a, no, nah, he's trying to take your glory, ain't he? No, he wasn't. You know, you know you was the first usher. See, he, see, see they inflate, inflating himself. <laughs> inflating himself. <laughs> I'm just this. They was ushering in my mother's living room at the front door, in the living room. Harry and my Aunt Mozella was standing at that door. Usher, watch this. And I could say, with Juan here, here she is today, 25 years later. Yeah. 25 years later. Juan, you came later, but Gina, she was here. 20, and look where she at still at today. 25 years later. And watch this. Her love never changed. And I, I could call out everybody, but I wanted to use her because she was the first yeah. usher yes, sir. in the living room in my mother's house. But still sitting here with, right now with honor and humility, looking at me as a father figure. In 25 years. A lot of things can change in 25 years. A lot of people and how you feel about somebody can change in 25 years. But love never stops loving. It's consistent. It, it never wavers. It never changes. Love don't change. Love never wavers. Love always think the best, respond the best. Love never picks and chooses who it want to love. Don't do that. Which eventually, it's more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long. Out the words of knowledge have forgotten have forgotten. Did you see that brother that came the other week and hugged me? He was one of the first members of the church. He said, I've been gone almost 20 some years, but I've never forgotten you. He said, you made a mark on me when I was going through what I was going through at that time. Because love don't change us. Love don't pick and choose who you want to love based on the clothes and the looks. Are you with me here? I believe God is trying to change our hearts, folks. I believe God is trying to get us to look at our heart and the condition of our heart. Do you just speak against your man of God as if it's nothing? His wife as if it's nothing. Because in order to do that, I have just dishonored the anointing that is on this life and have no value for it. Watch this. Look at nine. Watch this. Our present knowledge, prophecies, they're partial. Watch this here. Look at verse 10. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. Here we go as we close. Watch this. Look at this. Verse 11. Verse 11. That's it. I know it's one more. There we go. When I was a child. Here we go. That's what I want to end with. I sp when I was a child. I spoke with childish matters. I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured 
And I set aside my childish ways. In other words, at one time and in one season of my life, that was okay. But you know what? I'm bigger than that now. I'm greater than that now. God is moving me into bigger and better things. God got a greater plan for me. God want to use me to help somebody else grow and mature and to become stronger. So in order for me to do that, I got to put away childish things. I can't, I can't allow no more what somebody say be so offensive to me that I hold grudges. I can't allow anymore just because somebody may misinterpret something or conceive. You know what, man, God is bigger than that. I can't allow anymore me to not extend courtesy to you even though you're not extending it to me. I can't allow it anymore. I'm matured. And the proof of my maturity is not how long I've been saved. The proof of my maturity is the depthness of my love. Come on, stand with me. Come on, stand with me. Come on, stand with me. The gateway to the supernatural. We're going to get into some things this month. As we embark on 25 years that's coming up in ministry as pastor and almost 30 years in ministry, boy, we've seen some things, good and bad, positive and negative. After 25 years of starting this church in my mother's living room, we was having Bible study. We were living in J.C. Morgan at the time. We were having Bible study in our home at, in, in J.C. Morgan. But we had our first Sunday morning service in Turnkey, my mother's house. And they stand here 25 years later. Wow. I'm not talking about like we had other big support from other ministries. I'm not talking about like we had an organization behind us helping us. Hmm. I'm not talking about we had people just dumping big money to help us get started. Hmm. It was what it was our faith. Doing it the best we can. Hurt, disappointed, trying, trying. But God's grace was there every step of the way. My point of saying that to you is this. Never strive to be perfect. Strive to be the best you can be. Because when you strive to be perfect, you'll put unreasonable amount of pressure on yourself that you can't fulfill. And you'll find yourself making more mistakes than making progress. But when you be the best you can be, your progress may be slow. And it may not be as fast as somebody else's progress. But progress is progress. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end should greatly increase. But above all, 
You got to guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues and the forces of life. That's the gateway to the supernatural. And that's why today, I dare not let nobody speak against this ministry. As if something is wrong with it. Because when you look out among this congregation, I'm telling it online and I tell it everywhere I go. I was just telling it to some pastors down in Charlotte. Don't let the cars fool you. Don't let the clothes fool you. Because when you walk in here, you're looking at transformed people. You're looking at people that was in darkness, but you, it looked like they don't have no darkness on them at all. That we call the transforming power of God came on them and transformed their lives. So I dare not let no one speak as if something is wrong with us.